Hello. Good afternoon. It is such a delight to be able to trade sunny Southern California for this um, weather. Uh, thank you to everyone who made this possible. Maria and I would like to first acknowledge that we are here with and for the Sama de Laut of, of Sitangkai and Mabalakat, who offered their stories in a way that no writing could ever emulate. Through them, we are here with you today. Maria sends her apologies for she is unable to join us physically, though she is online and, and will join our conversations after. Some of the words I will utter are hers. Know that they are from a situated voice from an embodied Maria somewhere in Hawaii. Michelle Caswell warns us of the two discussions of the archive by humanity scholars and of archives by, by archival study scholars and archivists that are happening on parallel tracks in which scholars in both disciplines are largely not taking part in the same conversations, not speaking the same conceptual languages, and not benefiting from each other's insights. While probably every single conceivable discipline have made an archival turn during the last two decades, the foundations and directions of such can be disparate or tangentially related at best. These discontinuities are further embodied in digital humanities projects, suffering some of which suffers from a lack of discursive interdisciplinarity. It is within these tensions that Maria, a literary and cultural studies scholar, and I, an archivist, find ourselves in. Where do we begin such a discussion? For us, it is through exploring this archive-archives relations, not through Foucauldian or Derridian lenses, or issues of categorization or metadata specifications, both inscribed colonial lenses and practices, but rather by poetically listening to the sea. The primacy of the written over the oral, of the fixed as opposed to the fluid, and the colonial archive emphasizes the assumed equivalency of literacy with the hegemon and the literacy with the indigene. By looking at orature, the oral is considered analogous rather than subordinate to the literary. More importantly, orature refuses to succumb to the classification of folk or prehistoric. Far, far from a passé form of artistic expression, Orature remains a manner of a relation of a world, both pre- and post-colonial. However, colonial archival collection, transcription, and translation loses the instance of performance. The performance becomes subject to a series of transformations, all of which have underlying political and poetic agendas. The colonized archive is an archive of exactitude and fixity, shaped and determined by inscription. In contrast, the oral archive of the Sama de Laot in Southeast Asia, who traditionally lived on boats upon the sea, refuses such static measures of storage and authenticity. As such, to reconceive the archive in the oral and be able to consider the sea as a vault of memory requires a different perspective on the manner through which memory is stored, received, and related. To reconceive the archive in the digital calls for the same. I should have totally premise this, that we're taking a totally 180 degree turn from the last piece. The Sama de Laot is an ethno-linguistic group dispersed in insular Southeast Asia. The orator, particularly the Katakta, stored in the Ateneo Epics archive, were collected from Sama de Laot Waladijin, who dwell around the islands of Tawi-Tawi, Philippines, between the Sulu and Celebes Sea. Among the orator of the Sama de Laot, the Katakta may be considered one of the most sacred. It is a chant, often mistranslated as an epic, that contains syncretic story either based on Islamic narrative or the Sama de Laot quotidian. More importantly, it is a song form endowed with the power to drive away the ills of the human body when no other method seems to work. The katakata is exclusively the domain of the Walidijin, roughly translated as spirit bearers or shamans of the Sama de Laot. It is, taught to the Wali, it is taught to the Wali di Jin through a dream by a spirit, the Jin or Saitan, that indwells in the body. As those specifically chosen by the spirits, they are tasked with ensuring the health of the community by healing their spirits and bodies. The Katakta is a privileged space of memory that requires a connection to the sea and the spirits as a way of accessing its stomaturgic power. More than that, however, it is also an archive of Samo de Laot culture and history that marks their traditions and contemporary struggles. 
Lumujum sa haya or for telling the truth. Akatakata sang by the wali Dijin Yusuf Maksud Ambarat of, Sinta- of, of Sitankai begins with an aquatic vision of uh, begu- begins with an aquatic vision of emerging from the sea as he makes his way towards an island. Here, Ambarat relates the process through which he acquires the narrative from the depths of the water, and it is only when he comes ashore that he is able to begin his song. In this movement from sea to island, a rupture of the present time by way of accessing the past is depicted, a seeming retour of a waljaman or a time long past. To be present is thus a matter not only of time but also of place. And this is what the sea may hold. It contains the past, the sea as memory. In Ambarat's poet- poetic portrayal of memory retrieval, the sea becomes an archive of the ephemeral. The paradox of the oral archive arises from the sound's lack of material form. Unlike the written word that is fixed and static, sound dissolves at the moment of utterance, refusing precise reproduction over time. With every repetition, something changes, and no stable archive can be produced. Yet, could the concept of the archive be reimagined, where relation is not inscribed, but rather it flows? An archive of ephemerality is one that contains the environment and performs the work of memory beyond the desire to affix and preserve, for the very nature of orature refuses such fixity. To reconceive the archive in the oral and be able to consider the sea as a vault of memory requires different perspectives on the manner through which memory is stored, retrieved, and related. Upon the Sama de Laozi of memory, the Walidijin plays the role of the archon, keeper, collector, and curator. Each performance of Takatakata becomes the Walidijin's resistance against the violence wrought by the history of subjugation through his invocation of memory. Unlike the sorcerer's written history, the very nature of Takatakata as orature refuses fixity. The memory access from the depths of the sea cannot be held completely in the body of the chanter. Something is always left behind and altered in every repetition. For instance, the, ref- the, self-relix- the self-reflexivity and metacriticality exhibited by the chanter Haji Ishmael Ibrahim in the Katakata Si Baga Baga reveals an awareness of the form by referring to its characteristics, lies, and deception. The Wali Dijin claims that he can do little about it due to the nature of orality as it comes from the past, the mythic time of their ancestors. In this sense, the Wali Dijin understands the katakata only gains potency at the moment of its utterance. They access a performative sea, one that varies with every move of the current, a milieu de memoir. A milieu de memoir is communal, belongs to public life, functions through a network of, of, of associations with diverse places, spaces, and groups, relies upon meton, metonymic constructions, and like human memory, condenses, abridges, alters, displaces, and projects fragments of the past, making them alive in the present for particular groups. It is this vision of the sea as memory that resonates with the orality of Takatakata, sung by the shamans of, the, the of Samadilawat, the Walidi Jin. The sea is an environment of memory, not merely a place, a lu, but an inhabited place, a milieu, that ac- activates all the process of memory in the present. This, archipel- this archipelagic archive is at once created, accessed, and conveyed at the moment of performance of the katakata. The aptness of sea as storage of these narratives may be in part due to the very nature of, of orality. But Chalard reminds us, quote, there is, in short, a continuity between the speech of the water and the speech of man. Human language has a liquid quality, a flow in its overall effect, water in its consonants. End quote. As the Sama de Laot Wali Dijin dwells upon the sea, the sea becomes the vault of memory that he accesses so that he may transport memory to shore through his voice and become an agent of healing and resistance. How, we, how do we then embody the archive as seas of memory to which we've articulated to an archives as seas of memory? We begin by critiquing what has been done before or by looking at the current archival grain. The Philippine Epics and Ballads Archive is a project headed by French linguist anthropologist Nicole Rivelle, with the financial support of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of France and the French Embassy in Manila. 
in her own discussion of the process, she claims to have collaborated with 25 Filipino scholars and other knowledgeable locals to, quote, preserve the voices and the beauty of verbal art forms from 15 different cultural communities, end quote. Through audio tapes, photographs, and computer storage of manuscripts in the source languages and in, in, in the source languages and in English, Tagalog, and or French translations. The collection has been stored at the Bibliothèque Nationale de France. I'm butchering French language. I have been butchering it for a while. Apologies. Or maybe I shouldn't be apologizing. Um, the Centre National de la Research Scientifique in France and the Ateneo de Manila University. The Rizal Library at Ateneo, de Mila, Ateneo de Manila University has a special server that provides free access to most of the multimedia e-collection portion of the archive following Reve Revelle's design. Immediately, the process through which the songs were collected, stored, and disseminated follows the ethnographer's vision. Beyond the clear contention regarding the position of Revelle as a French academic funded by the French government, the rhetoric of preservation of art without without raises the question of for whom the archive was created. The community becomes secondary to the art that is meant to be kept. Further questions arise from the choice of vehicular languages and storage locations. When Maria spoke to the Wali de Jin Jaafar Ijahali about hearing a performance of Takatakata, she was denied because Takatakata is a sacred performance, performance not meant for mere play. Yet Revelle's own accounts of her collection with the aid of her informant, Talib Sangongot, reveals that the katakata that she had collected was sung and for performed for her sake. The katakata also reflects back this instance when she becomes part of the very songs she collected. In 2017, 2018, I, I met with Dr. Revelle as per the request of uh, Dr. Fernando Jalcita. Revelle at that point felt that she was losing control of the archives stating that the university library was not paying much attention to it, leaving it to be dated amidst new technological developments. As an audiovisual, as an audiovisual and digital archivist, I was brought in to mediate and advise on how the library can and should proceed with the collection. Revel talks about how digitization of an intangible cultural heritage forces us to confront the quality of the database employed. And this is ensured, according to her, by the complementary set of disciplines of linguistics, ethnopoetics, lexico lexicometry, pragmatics, ethnomusicology, acoustics, eth ethnology, and cognitive anthropology. The library, on the other hand, insisted that the collection is already duly processed and readily available. Although seemingly digital in form, I felt that the archives retains colonial and anal analogic analogic methods of freezing, a highly performative space, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. This is when I started conversations with Maria, and more importantly, with the Sama de Laot community. We're looking at exploring archives, as Anne Stoller articulates, not as extracted content turned object, but rather to turn archives as processes, as an act of reassemblage where there is creativity, fluidity, and continuance, that though it is referential, it is not fixed that as Vern Harris articulates, it is best understood as a sliver of a sliver of a sliver of a window into a process. It is a fragile thing, an enchanted thing, defined not by its connections to reality, by, 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 but by its open-ended layerings of construction and reconstruction. Such an awareness transforms the archival endeavor into an exercise in releasing meanings, tending mystery, opening the archive. In proposing the confluence of the digital and the oral by the way of Sama de Laot orature, the very utterance and reutterance of the word, the use and reuse of the digital object function as an archive in itself. Given these, what will be the shape of this digital humanities project? How can the oral harness the digital and how can the digital embody the oral? Together with the Sama de Laot, how do we design the digital seas of memory? We are in our early stages of exploration, and as you've heard, highly theoretical and conceptual at this point. But this is also a navigation of how our positionalities as archivists and critics become implicated in a way that we imagine both the archive and the archives, especially for the Sama de Laut, whose orature as archive is an integral part of their well-being. Navigating this digital sea of memory means unmooring our own preconceptions of archival work towards what archive means to the community. We look forward to sharing with you our findings as we are excited to look and see where, the, where these seas will actually take us. Thank you. <laughs>